This bit to me is probably the most bizarre, and the most different. I can't recognize it in the slightest because this big mound here is putting me off. So I'll try and get it into perspective for you. So the fort and the rapids was somewhere on the other side of this hill over there. I remember the railway being down at the lakeside, which would be down here, but at the minute it's raised up. So the track bed will be under there somewhere. And then as you made your way around here, past the cinema and everything, towards Spaceport, which was somewhere here, but down. You had the little island here, which is still there today, with the little building on it for the boat to dock there and I remember a big restaurant behind it. So let's see if we can recognise anything around here. I doubt it, but you never know. So we're onto the little uh, dock island. You can see some wooden edge in there and another piece here. Definitely the old boat dock. It runs all the way up there, look. Let's get a bit closer and some uh, fence posts in there again. And just over here, you can see the original, without getting wet, the original boat dock there, look. Or the edge of the building, maybe. That might be the rafters for the building. Okay, and on this section of the lake, it's all raised up, so it just looks completely different. But we found the old boating dock just in the trees there, which was a, the old one. And then right at the front of here, there was a concrete dock for the steamer, the paddle steamer. And probably not now, because as you can see, a lot of the rapid rocks have been dumped down here. These used to line the troughs of the rapids, from what I remember. And they've used them as landscaping down here. Let's just have a quick look. I think they've buried the concrete dock that was underneath. Actually, maybe that's it there. You can just see it. Is that concrete? Yeah, it is. The concrete dock's there underneath all these rocks. Uh, let's just have a look up here. Yeah, nothing much remaining there. So where we are now, like I said, was the little uh, island that came out. There was a big building right here with a red roof, from what I remember. And the miniature railway, I can't remember if it went in front of it. I think it went behind it. Yeah, it went behind it. And there's a station somewhere here. The missile was right there where that mound is. The spaceport was all this section at the back here. And yeah, that was the end of it. And then you made your way around the lake. So yeah, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to do this photo fade of missile. I can do one just around there, but I'm not gonna be able to do the one I wanted, which was taken from behind looking this way at the missile and the lake in front, because where it was, was right underneath that mound there. And I need to be the other side of it, which would mean I'd be 30 feet in the air. So. That's not going to happen with this one, unfortunately, but I'll put the picture in anyway so you can see the one I was talking about. And I was going to match that, but you know where it is anyway because it's at the top of that mound. And also the whole of Spaceport, the go-kart track and everything like that is underneath this mound here at the level that I'm actually walking on now, which is very strange. But anyway, we'll head a bit further around the lake because I do believe there's a lot more left around here. And we'll hopefully see some more remains and I'll be able to get you a photo fade of the missile looking this way. So at this point here, uh, as we're heading away from Spaceport and the missile, you had the path working its way around the lake as it does today. It's nice to see one of the trees is still here from the park days. The miniature railway would have been behind us somewhere here and we can see a bed of ballast here that follows us round. We're not convinced that that's the track bed but it is in the right place. And it could well be, who knows? So there's the original tree remaining from the park days and you can see where the new path that they've laid turns into tarmac right here. This is the original park path. At last we found something remaining, can't believe it. And this is the original way around the edge of the lake. Okay, so I'm gonna do you a missile photo fade from somewhere here. Now it's not exact because the path or the, the place that they're stood is actually on an old wooden pier which was down here and it's gone now. But that tree is still in this image. So let's try and uh, match this up now. So you can just see the missile appearing through the trees right there where that mound is today. 
and Spaceport would have been right behind it. And you've got the little island to the right of that and the miniature railway just behind those trees in front of the missile. But yeah, that is so strange seeing it like this. Instead of missile, we've got a big mound of dirt. Story of this place, I'm afraid. Very sad, very sad. So we've reached a bit of a dead end here, so the path from the park is still intact over there. There's a bit of rubble in the way here, and you can see it comes back again, the tarmac. And if I remember rightly, you went over a little bridge here, which is no longer here. Um, it's now the outlet for the lake, which it always was because that bridge is there anyway, but it's hard to visualise here which way it went round. I'm sure the bridge was here and there was a track bed across here. Yeah, so this bridge carries the road around the edge of the park, which was always a public road anyway. That's always been there. That carries that around the edge. And the, the park path just literally crossed here. Just some culvert pipes going through. Uh, all dug out today for the lake. Uh, so the miniature railway would have been here as well, crossing right here. Ooh, I found some old rope. Probably from an old fence. The Easter line, the edge of the lake maybe. Lots of rope fences in here. So here we are on the other side of that bridge, or the overpass. Heading round the trap bed now. And right in the middle of the pathway is, you can see the pathway there, is these piles of well, they look like railway sleepers, they probably are, but they're uh, tied together in like big sections. Could this have been the bridge that I was talking about? It was over here. So the bridge that spanned that little uh, culvert pipe that used to be there. Yeah, I reckon it was. Probably carried the railway over as well. So we're still making our way around the edge of the lake on the back section where there wasn't much going on anyway. But you can see the tourist path here. And just up there on the higher plateau is the miniature railway track bed, which you can still see if I lift you up. It's still there. And uh, yes, they're using it as an access road now. And the railway would have been on, again, behind these trees and you can see the old retaining wall in there. Or well, it's like a wooden retaining wall to hold the railway track bed up there. Now, I never remember seeing this section in the park days, but that's the, again, the old access road above here. It used to run over the boundary of the park, the miniature railway. Again, it's a bit hard to tell here, uh, but it would have come out them trees, circled its way round this way, and then on to the lake edge there. And the pathway at the minute runs through there, but this has all been slightly changed. And right in front of us there would have been the Buffalo Coaster and then the Alamo area is up there to the right. Just made it up onto that bridge. Uh, you can see where the miniature railway and the path would have been around the edge of the park. Now this would be related to the old mining that used to take place on the site. There used to be the Henna branch line. It used to run through here from left to right and into the site and the colliery that was here, but obviously long gone. The Hena Branch Railway was operated by the Great Northern Railway and ran through the site of today's theme park. But what was then coal mining territory? The colliery also had multiple railways and sidings connected to this line for transporting coal. And so did the local brickworks and gasworks, located just behind the park's boundaries. Some of the remains of these lines are still visible today from within the old theme park. This, I believe, was an access road um, at some point during the mine's history, it still continues down. And the newer park entrance, which we'll come to shortly, was up there underneath another bridge, which is demolished now. And right next to the blocked off railway bridge, there's another one here, which would have been the colliery line coming through, or the mineral railway, as they called it, from the main railway, which was behind us, and on into the site, which would have been an open cast colliery or open cast mining at the time. And before that, an actual colliery. So yeah, there's a bit of history there as well. So where we are on this headland now. So we've just made it round the edge of the lake and uh, you would have had the missile right there. Uh, you can see the old embankment here, still as it was. 
this was where the buffalo coaster was, if you remember that. It used to run sort of round here, all the way down and back in a big uh, rectangle shape. It's where they're building all the new houses now. Imagine if they called them Buffalo Court or something like that. <laughs> and then we're looking across to what was the big arena, if you remember that. It used to be called Alamo, and then later in its life it was the JCB area. So they had the uh, Alamo section here, other side of the Buffalo, and then the Twin Looper roller coaster was there. And then the big stadium behind it, the Indy Carts one, if you remember that. All earmarked for housing now. They're, st they're currently building the houses here. As you can see, they've already done the ones at the top. But anyway, we're going to head down to where the second entrance was, the later entrance for the park, and look at the car parks and everything down there and the old entrance area. So we've reached the uh, what was the new entrance coming in to the park. Again, similar sort of level, but look completely different today. I mean, they've got this uh, whatever it is, sewage waste thing here. And then they've raised the level here because it would have been flat. And if I remember rightly, when you came in, you had the Alamo on the right and then the Buffalo on the left and then the lake. But yeah, the Alamo section was all that bit there. And the Twin Looper was here. So let's head out and uh, just have a look down this entranceway and see if there's anything left outside here. I think there might be. And then we're going to do a photo fade on the outside here as well. Lots of uh, JCB tyres here. Uh, don't remember these being here from the park days. Maybe they are from the old JCB section that they had at this park and <laughs> recycled them. Who knows? So let's just do a quick photo fade from here. Looking into the park from the car park behind me and the uh, ticket area as you came in. And as you can see, it looked like a really cheap temporary entrance, which is in effect what it was. And, uh, but it lasted for a long time, which is a shame. The original entrance at the top of the site was much better than this one. This always looked temporary. We're now in the secondary car park, which is round the side, and also the overspill from the uh, old entrance as well in the early days. Like I said, you would have entered into the new entrance, which was just there on the right, which was awful. Porter cabins and everything. But the main car park is just behind all these, uh, these brambles here. Uh, not anymore. It's still there, but it's all, as you can see, overgrown. And we're coming up to the main section. I do remember parking in here and walking down because obviously this was the newer one. But the weird thing is when they put planning application in about 2003, four, something like that, for the holiday village, if you remember that, got refused outright. Well, that was, a lot of that was meant to be on the land behind here. A lot of holiday villages and caravans and things like that. It's gonna take up a lot of that land. Apart from the first major plans for Adventure World in 1997 to build a centre park style holiday village, there was also another attempt by the new owners in 2003 to build a large scale caravan park with holiday homes. It would have utilised unused greenbelt land on the park edges and some land that they already leased but sat empty. This is the approximate location of where they wanted to build. I did have the plans for this on my old computer but unfortunately it went kaput. So this map from my memory will have to suffice. Safe to say this was also refused by the local council over numerous concerns and the rest is history as they say. Does anybody have a clue what these are? So they look like lighting poles but they're actually made out of wood. And they've got um, Little screws at the bottom to be bolted into the ground into a foundation. They're all different sizes. Some of them are concaved as well. This sort of uh, get narrower towards the end. Looks like a uh, supports for an assault course or something. They're all just piled in the old car park. And from here we get a nice close up of where the uh, twin looper used to be. And uh, there used to be a mound here, as far as I'm aware. There used to be a hill, so you couldn't see in here. 
But this was the arena, the old Alamo arena, and the stand was here somewhere, and the Twin Looper was in front of it there. It's yeah, so strange to see it now with houses on it, and then the rest of the car parking on this side all the way down still has all the old parking lines on it. It looks a lot bigger than what I remember it, but the trees have obscured some of it as well. You can see the parking space is still there. It's so surreal. I mean, it was always this empty anyway. I remember coming in its later years and there was never a car in here, hardly anyway. And we've now reached the top end of the old car parks. Looking back down there towards the new entrance on the right. And uh, the overspill car parks were in the fields just behind there. So all them fields were owned by the park as well. I can't, I can't imagine they ever got used, the overspill especially in the last 10 years of its life. But what I do know is they were going to use them, like I said, for their holiday village proposals that they had. A lot of this surrounding land was going to be part of the Centre Park style holiday park. A close up look of the old Woodside colliery that was here. 1847 until 1961, according to the gates. You've got your winding gear there, but I don't think that's the original winding gear. I think, I remember it being a lot bigger than that. And that, I think it was replaced that in the 90s or the early 2000s. So that's interesting. I never knew this, but it's actually still used as a mine water treatment scheme. So they obviously use it to pump water out of the mines. Yeah, the scheme controls mine water levels to prevent it polluting local, local water courses. So as you can see, there's the old shaft going down and they've got the pipes running in there to pump the water out and you can actually hear it whirring round. So yeah, I think the old uh, winding gear was on there. Obviously that's the shaft, so it must have been. This is just a, a monument today. It's, it's not actually over, any, over anything, so... Yeah, this was definitely replaced, or moved anyway. So I was out filming yesterday at Shipley in Bradford, doing Shipley Glen, and I'm here today at the American Adventure, which is also in Shipley in Nottingham, which is very strange. Two Shipleys in two days. I hope you enjoyed the series. It's a place I visited many times as a child and it held a lot of nostalgic memories for me. There is apparently a six part documentary series about the park in production, being made by On Track Productions. So hopefully more memories and information to come very soon for us all. Well, thank you very much for joining us here at American Adventure. I hope you enjoyed this series and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.